friends, welcome back to another vlog. I'm really in the swing of making these recently. Um, it's so sunny, as you can see. I'm wearing a summer dress. This isn't my full outfit, but I actually just took off one of the layers of my outfit because it was so warm. Also, I gave myself my own blow dry and I'm really proud of myself. But does anyone have... I have super thick hair, which did all fall out, but now has grown back, which is great. Happy for not having... PTSD hair loss but it is um so thick that if I don't blow dry it like sleek and it will look like a mushroom but I like the look of it being like more messy but I don't know how to do that while not making it like a mushroom so any gals have any tips on or gals or guys who have this scent hair what I can do because right now I feel like it's like too styled for me but anyway it's the weekend tonight. We're actually going to Utrecht. My best Dutch accent, which is like a smaller city, not that far away from here, um, to watch one of our friends. They are in a queer choir. Queer choir, that's a hard thing to say. And they are doing a fundraiser performance because they're going like on a, to like a queer choir festival in Italy, which is really cool. So I'm so excited, I fucking love like they do like um renditions of like pop songs and that is like a guilty pleasure of mine that's something i very much enjoy and our friend was like there's gonna be Dua Lipa it's gonna be Taylor Swift and I was they're not I don't listen to that music on on the daily but for some reason when it's like redone in that like glee style <laughs> sign me out so anyway that's what we're doing but, but the good thing is also we're going to Utrecht which if you have been around for a long time you'll know when tom first moved to the netherlands that is where he lived so we have a, a all-time favorite vegan restaurant that we love so much so we're gonna go and eat there for an early dinner and there's two bookshops that i also really love so we're gonna go check those out perhaps buy a book or two maybe um and then what else is on the docket for this weekend i've got a friend coming over tomorrow and i need to pack because next weekend we're going to brighton Woo! when the trip leaves the group chat me and five of my friends it's like two of my best girlfriends and their boyfriends so six of us which feels so grown up us and our boyfriends are going to brighton for the long weekend in the uk um i'm staying in airbnb and we're going to do all of our favorite brighton things and i'm so 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 excited one of them my one of my friends partners has never been before so i'm so excited to give them the old local tour of like booked into so many of our favorite restaurants and I don't think I like vlog like at the camera and I think so I want to hang out with my friends and also um retain any ounce of energy I possibly can um and we're gonna go to the sauna and we're gonna go to many a beachside pub and it's gonna be great so the whole point of me telling you that is I need to pack um some cute outfits it's also due to be very warm in Brighton which will be lovely so I think we will whip the camera out for a little pack with me capsule wardrobe situation hopefully tomorrow morning so that's on the docket for the video reading wise i'm having a really good reading time at the moment i started the other night the summer of my amazing luck by miriam taves i've spoken here about being a miriam supremacist about loving miriam with all my heart and i picked this one up tom bought this one we were in berlin um a few months ago and i was Getting into bed late one night, I had had a really bad day, like just feeling very grumpy. Do you guys know that? Especially if you're a chronic pain person, like when your pain just makes, it's like, makes me irritable. And I was like, oh, everything's pissing me off. And I couldn't settle on a book. And I was like, oh, do you know what? I was saving this for, I don't know what, I was trying to spread out my Miriam Taze reading. So I think we've only got, we being Tom and I. <sighs> How many of these do we have left to read? one two three i've got three fictions of hers left and her memoir about her dad so i was trying to spread them out but i was like Do you know what here's the time and i picked it up and i'm loving it so far it was first published in 1996 in canada crazy the year, the year of my birth um and this follows lucy and her son who live in a like housing project in winnipeg which is named it's called like half a life i think is the colloquial name for it and it houses a lot of single mothers and their children so it's about 
sort of um, living on the poverty line in Canada with the weather and the experience of, she calls it the doll, like being on state benefits and navigating the lack of humanity in those systems. But with Miriam's just imbued sense of humour into those dark situations with, yeah, such levity and light and the oddball characters that she creates, like Lucy, the father of Lucy's baby was like a fire breather and there's lots of conversations about yeah anonymity um within like fathers and sort of inability to get dads to fucking pay the money that they should be paying to their kids that they are half responsible for um and it's really funny and as described by the guardian career defining light touch on the darkest of subjects so really enjoying that only a few chapters in so far and then i'm listening to an audio flowers on fire which is a non-fiction book i was looking to buy a copy of i first saw it on if you guys watch cowrie cakes who is a like a big youtuber they make content about being an expat living in seoul in south korea and i used to religiously watch their videos right up until me and Tom took a trip to South Korea and we loved it so much and used so many of her recommendations um, and I've got back into her videos kind of recently and she launched a booktube channel she reads a lot of fantasy like not necessarily stuff that I read but she was talking about this non-fiction book and I was like oh my god this sounds amazing I bet it's going to be expensive to get it here in the Netherlands because it's like American published and about South Korea so not necessarily one that I'd pick up in a bookshop here but then I saw as it always does come through it was on script and I'm absolutely loving this. I wouldn't say the narration is like my favorite. The the voice actor doesn't have a particularly like charismatic voice that's really, you know, sort of imbuing the story with a sense of, um, not excitement's the wrong word because it's a deeply disturbing book, but just, yeah, it just it falls a bit flat for me. But because the content is so interesting, I feel like you can look past that, but it is definitely one I probably would have preferred to read. Nonetheless, I'm really enjoying this. So this tells the story of South Korea's feminist movements and the fight for gender equality sort of over the last 50 years, I would say. Um, and it is deeply, deeply disturbing. I knew some of the statistics and the stories and the sort of anecdotes that make its way into Western media, but I didn't really know the extent of of um of misogyny that's baked into so much of um, south korean society so it talks about various different movements sort of tracing back from starting with me too essentially and how western me too in america and europe finally gave south korean women a loud enough voice to push against legisl like age-old legislation that has been so devastating and harming to their ability to be equal in their country um and it talks about sort of yeah various movements and like the different factions that made up the ongoing conversation there with feminism so it looks at uh anti-abortion and a re really interesting especially since i had just read that book on the one child policy and it talks about a similar situation that wasn't um as directly implemented in south korea as it was in china because of the different governmental structures but the really big push to sort of limit population size and pro birth control pro small family and then similar to china are then decades later a need to repopulate and to produce sort of more children than women wanted to and within the circumstances of of people who got pregnant in south korea lose their jobs are without financial support if they are unwed and just like all the circumstances surrounding having a baby make it very unappealing for people to want to have babies and yet it's viewed as your civic duty to have children so that conversation is super interesting and yeah the anti-abortion laws that are there to it, yeah in terms of like civic duty to repopulate which i thought was really interesting obviously mostly we, we talk about um anti-abortion and pro-life people from religious points of view and so this point of view was um yes yeah, something i hadn't really thought about before but it was super interesting and then a lot about yeah like i say the discrimination against pregnant people in workplaces and the chronic overwork and stress and the drinking culture in south korea that led women to like harm to pregnant women and also like the recurrence of sexual assault and harassment in workplace scenarios so 
there's so many different parts of this that are so deeply disturbing um but the one i found most harrowing to read about is the the school children who were the school girls like teenage girls in elite schools who were abused by their teach by their male teachers who were sexually assaulted and harassed and a cultural acceptance of essentially paedophilia which is so unbelievably beyond the pale to me and the way it was told in this yeah through different journalistic endeavors interviews with students interviews with like movement leaders so like girls who had gone out and protested and then sort of the crackdown on protesting in general which is super interesting given obviously the state of the uk right now and the desire for the tory government to completely eliminate uh, peaceful protesting as uh, something we shouldn't be allowed to do, which is really scary. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of parallels here, but the cultural context is particularly interesting, I think, because of the deep, the misogyny feels just like so baked in to the way that people believe that women really are second best citizens and or like just subjugated in all formats of their life. And it's so, yeah disturbing to me um so i'm really not enjoying that one but i'm really liking uh learning about that at the moment and then i started a short story collection on audio when i was really unwell early in the week and i don't think i've ever listened to a short story collection on audio but i really liked it because of the singular sort of chunks you get to listen to a piece of fiction in so like some will be 35 minutes some will be 15 minutes and that's sort of each story and it feels like you don't have to sort of hold on to all those trains of thought when you're listening to a fiction like novel so i started watching girls and women which i've been meaning to read for so long danielle pender is an editor i worked with in the past they run a really cool magazine called repost um that i wrote for last year a couple of years ago and um yeah i'm so excited to read their debut fiction collection and i'm adoring it the audio narration of it is brilliant uh has really good regional accents and differentiation between characters and the stories as the title suggests which is interesting that it sort of crosses over with the book about south korea although these stories are set in the uk um about yeah deep-rooted misogyny and the culture of of men believing they have ultimate power over women in all circumstances so the couple of stories i've read so far i've really really enjoyed and the ones about girlhood and coming of age are sort of nostalgic but also um yeah food for thought definitely this whole combination of, of books right now is really interesting actually because they're all about women and girls and, and feminism and equality so yeah a good cohesive reading week going on in my world um so yeah i'll show you some clips in the bookshop and i'll be back Probably tomorrow, if I buy anything. burritos or like kind of wraps from the turkey supermarket last night leftover lemon fingerling potatoes a great big bunch of coriander black beans half an onion some mushrooms i was using up fridge bits to make it very delicious brekkie tom's getting eggs for his but i'm not an egg gal and i've got these from the farmer's market a couple of weeks ago which are so good these jalapenos, they're so crispy and like crunchy in a good way. And I'm also making iced tea, hibiscus iced tea with vanilla because I have a friend coming over to sit on my balcony. Hey everyone, I'm 
trying to pack for, I say a weekend away, but we aren't actually going, we always do this and I end up going to England for like five days because by the time you get a train there and a train back, I have to schedule in sort of like the inability to do stuff on the day we arrive. So anyway, I'm packing. As you can see, it's very warm in Amsterdam today and I'm running the fan, so sorry if you can hear that. And I'm doing the washing, so it's all going on. But I, for some reason, I'm like not believing it's going to be that warm, even though the weather report says it's going to be like 20 degrees. But then the lows are like 9 or 10, which I get is like the middle of the night and stuff. But when you're out in the evening by the beach, it's windy, you know? So anyway, I start started packing normally with a jacket i feel like unless it's like high high summer that i'm normally going to bring a jacket somewhere because i'm that kind of person where like i panic if i don't have enough warm clothes because i'm so cold so i started with a jacket which i'm going to take this military liner which i bought in an edinburgh vintage shop like five years ago but it comes in very handy and it's also like good blanket for on the train and it's just yeah it's handy so this color sort of then everything else has to go with this because that's what I'm going to be wearing when it's chilly and then for some reason I also find it absurd to travel with more than two pairs of shoes for like unless I'm going on a literal two week holiday so I'm definitely bringing my Birkenstocks to act as like you know running to the shop in the morning to make brekkie for everyone you don't want to get up your laces but also for the beach they're very handy but they're not like a full blown sandal and yeah these are just essential and I feel like you can also dress these up to be quite smart because these are the suede ones. Um, I did recently get a new pair because my feet has grown. Has, any, has this happened to anyone else? Age 27, have your feet grown? To the point where like, I don't know if it's like illness, like swelling, but like all a lot of my old shoes started to feel really tight. Um, so anyway, these are my new, quite new, but I've been sold by other ones and you know did a replacement situation but these go with a lot of things that I think they're quite smart because of the camel suede and then a pair of trainers these are my yellow gazelles which these are kind of in the same color family but these are just so classic and simple for summer outfits like even with this they would look so cute and I just love them so they're definitely my trainer go-to right now so anyway working from the bulkiest items in your case upwards make sense in my head because I'm like these are going to take up the most room so everything has to go with these. I'm going to throw in a pair of jeans because like I said I don't believe the weather's going to be as good as it will be. I am also going to bring shorts but I'm struggling <coughs> and I continue to struggle with like nice like jeans what used to be jeans and a nice top when I was younger like outfits you want to wear out that aren't like full blown, you don't wanna wear a dress, but you wanna wear something to feel a bit nicer than like, and to differentiate between what you've been wearing in the daytime. So I picked up these jeans and then this for like, we're going out to one of our favorite restaurants for Friday night dinner. And this is a little, a very old and other stories knitted vest, but it actually works as quite a cute dainty top. Just classic, maybe with an orange lip, some nice hair. And yeah, I feel good in that. So I was like, it doesn't matter if it's not fancy. And then in terms of tops that, all the tops I bought go with jeans and with shorts. So then I can mix and match this Ralph Lauren vintage shirt I'm packing for Saturday, but also works over a swimsuit when we're going on Sunday afternoon to the beach, like you can wear it over that. And then again, looks nice with jeans and shorts and then these trousers are the trousers i'm traveling in these are my go-to like spring summer trousers at the moment they're from uniglo i think they're called the easy pant they're like a you can't really tell but they're like a waffle material and particularly in the navy blue i think they're just so smart but literally as comfy as wearing tracksuit bottoms because they're elastic and loose all the way down and they're just my go-to right now so i'll be wearing those on the Eurostar, but also could throw them on with um a shirt or with just a plain white t-shirt that I'm packing and then that all looks good and then I'm only bringing one dress and it's the dress I wear all the time but for good reason it's so easy to dress up and down it's the toast like midweight cotton heavyweight cotton tiered dress I bought this in the sale about two and a bit years ago for about half price toast is extremely expensive but um i definitely got my wear out of this i wear it all the time and it's such a good transitional piece it looks really cute with the t-shirt underneath or on its own so i'm packing that with this is going to be i think the only jumper i'm bringing for the weekend 
which has got a hanger attached to it. Um, it's an old like fisherman crew neck, uh, like knitted jumper, but it's really quite lightweight. It's quite an open weave and it's like a classic cream color and it's very beachy to me. So you can, I can throw that on over the top or in the classic, very preppy style I've been enjoying recently, like over like this. Looks quite cute and just, yeah, as a backup, like I say, I'm afraid of being cold. And that outfit goes with accessories, which are so easy to pack and like take up such little room, but really make you feel like you're wearing different things every day. Um, I've got this pink neckerchief, which I have to wear with this dress one time. So that's so cute. That I will wear with the toast dress. And then I think on Friday night, with this top, I can either wear this in my hair or I've got a little blue bandana I can wear as a neckerchief moment and the blue goes with the yellow shoes really well. And then in terms of shorts, I have two options and I can't decide. So these are like a cream sort of almost like boxer style pair that I think are quite sweet and they would go on Sunday with this little checkered shirt I bought in a vintage market just before I went on my trip. That looks really cute, but also this shirt, if it's too cold, goes with the jeans. And also this could be a cute combo for the beach. But I don't know if I want to wear like full white shorts. I have these super old vintage Adidas shorts, but they are a lot shorter. And I mostly wear them to like hang around in. So if I was going to wear them with this, would be basically like wearing just shorts underneath and the shirt would look like a very short dress. So, I mean, I could throw in both pairs, that's not the end of the world. So we've got two shirts, one top, one jumper, one dress, one pair of jeans, one pair of shorts, one pair of trousers. And then just a vest top, which I will wear under my jumper, like on the Eurostar train with those blue trousers and a white t-shirt that I will wear under my, like with the jumper as well on going home on Tuesday, but also it looks cute with just like tucked into shorts with the neckerchief on top, like quite classic. Simple with the Birkenstocks. So yeah, I think I packed everything. I just need to account for pajamas, undies, and socks. Socks are very important to me for an outfit, particularly with the dress. I need a pink pair of socks for sure to go with the gazelles and the toast dress. And then I've got some really cool blue, like brighter sky blue ones, which I think will look cute with this if I wear the shorts. I like to assume my socks will be on show, but also it doesn't really matter if they don't get a run out. They're still just, they're just still comfy socks. So the only other thing I need to decide is I think I'm just gonna pack a little side bag and then Tom will like carry a tote bag. I'm in my wheelchair the whole time, not the whole time, but like I'm in my wheelchair when I'm out and about, so if I need to shove stuff in, everyone will just put everything on the wheelchair so we can bring extra bits and bobs. I don't really need like a handbag for going out kind of vibe. So that feels very productive and like that will feel like a packing cube and a half. So thank you for packing with me. I'll see you guys with a book update probably a bit later. Hello, looking a little less put together today. Um, well, can't remember what I was gonna say. I wanted to sign off this video with books. It's been a hard week so far, as it always is. Um, I finished reading The Summer of My Amazing amazing Luck. I really enjoyed this. It definitely isn't up there with like my top three favorite Miriam Taves books I've ever read, but it was a really good story. It had her hallmark humor her um her great characters female friendship um for being written in 1996 i thought it was um quite sort of modern in in this takes and it's um sort of sarcasm around um social security being on the doll and um the sort of the hardship of women uh as single mothers who are sort of the state's responsibility and the state don't give an F. So I really enjoyed this for that. I thought it was, um, yeah, just a good romp, a good ride. Then I finished listening to Flowers of Fire, On Fire or Of Fire, 
um, which was the non-fiction book about South Korean's feminist movement that I um, mentioned earlier. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, it went on, I think I mentioned in the um, previous clip that it spoke about the civil du civic duty to have babies, but it also went on to speak about the role of Christianity in Korean megachurches in South Korea and that sort of um, understanding of pro-life and anti-abortion sentiment and just in general sort of old-fashioned um, views about women and I really enjoyed the the culmination of all of that stuff and the, the consideration of how they move forward with legislation and the sort of the inner workings of any sort of social movement and how they um, struggle to make leaps forward in the in the progress when there are so many people with so many different opinions so really appreciated that wow there's such a cute dog outside oh my god it's like a whip with it or an italian greyhound and it's like beige and it's so cute um speaking of dogs i thought i'd just show you the couple of books i picked up while i was book shopping in utrecht we went to book candle steven sturk i think is the order of the words it's the indie bookshop by the cathedral off the udegrad near the like two falafel shops if that means anything to anyone who is an uh netherlands person otherwise probably not that relevant but i picked up a book i saw for my mum because i am swinging by hers before i make my way to brighton next week and i saw this and thought she would love it i really really hope she hasn't bought it but i wanted to get it as a surprise and if she does already have it for herself then i will keep this copy because i think i'd like to read it anyway this is called dog hearted essays on our fierce and familiar companions um it has loads of different people's writing in it, but some that I'm excited for is Cal Flynn, Jessica J. Lee, um, Nina Minion Powell, Evie Wilde, Esme Wijin Wang. So it sounds like there's going to be some brilliant essays in here. And as the title suggests, it's all about people's relationships to their dogs. So it says it asks about how wildness can be tamed, how you find moments of stillness in the simple act of observing your dog, befriending a sled dog called Suka in Finland. And here we see dogs at every stage of a person's life. The anthology brings joy and delight and depth and poignancy. It's going to make me want a dog really bad if I read this, which I'm not in the position to uh, do right now. But and I have pet hating landlords, rats. So this will definitely not be um useful in curbing my desire for a pet at the moment but i'm really excited to give this to my mum and hope she enjoys it and if not if she's already got it then we can both read it together and talk about it so then i picked up running in the family which is a memoir that i put in a radar video a while ago and i'm so excited to just see it in the in the bookshelves of i got this one in brochet let me find i had a bookmark but now i don't know where it is but that's my favourite bookstore in Utrecht and definitely probably my second favourite bookstore shop that I've been to in the Netherlands, second to Skeltema. Um, I really like its non-fiction section because it has non-fiction English and Dutch mix, but it's really easy to like find. It has like a lot of English stuff that's mixed in and it has so many titles I was deciding between like three or four different books to pick up. But I went with Running in the Family, which is a family memoir talking about um, the author's experience of going back to Sri Lanka after many years away. And it says, in the late 1970s, um, Michael returned to his native island of Sri Lanka and he recorded his journey along the way with all the overheard tall tales, the Baroque mythology of his Dutch Salonese family, with lyricism and wittiness. Um, it says it's deliriously romantic and inspired marriage of travel narrative and family memoir written by one of our most eloquent and poetic writers. So I know I read the first couple of pages. I think the writing style is really going to be for me and sort of the the concept of like marrying together those different stories. And it's definitely a place I haven't read much about, but I'm super interested in. Um, and I think this is a historic republication by Penguin, so it was first published in 1984 and republished in 2022. So yeah, keen to read a piece of sort of older travel writing. That is the books that I picked up. I was very reserved, is that the right word? I've got no brain cells left to go today, guys. Very reserved in my, um, my shopping because I do have a gift card for Skeltima here in Amsterdam so I was like there's no point buying loads of books but I don't find the non-fiction selection there very good that's why I allowed myself 
to pick these ones up. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm not sure when the next one of these will be out, but I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week, weekend, evening, morning, whenever you're watching this, please. Say hi in the comments, let me know what you've been reading recently, if any of these books catch your eye, and I'd just love to hear from you. Give the video a thumbs up, what else am I supposed to say? I think that's all. See you guys soon. Bye!